biblical truth of our hymn. I will sing of my Redeemer. And many times when we do something such as this, with historic, it comes with an interesting story. Now this is written by Phil Paul Bliss. On December 29, 1876, Philip and Lucy Bliss were traveling through Ashabua, Ohio. Forgive me for misquoting that or missaying it. On the Pacific Express train, they were going to Chicago. While the train was moving and crossing a trestle bridge, the bridge had collapsed. And the seven compartments, carriages, or units of the train fell into the icy ravine below. Now Bliss got out of the wreck. He escaped. And the, car the carriages or the cars of the train have already started to begin to burn on fire. And inside the train the train, the cars were still loose. And the story goes that I guess people tried to stop Philip, but he's going back in to, to get his wife. And it's quoted to say that if I cannot save her, I will perish with her. And Ephesians 5.25 Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. I hear so many men, they badmouth their wives in the marriage. I see so many Christian jokes on how bad the marriage is. You make me sick. You're not going to get rewarded in heaven. I've been married twice, wonderfully married, and looking for marriage again. But the young couple, there was no survival. And in the aftermath, you know, fire put out and everything, there was no trace of their bodies. And they think 92 of the 159 passengers were, had died. And it became known as the Ashtabula, A-S-H-T-A-B-U-L-A, -A -A, River Railroad Disaster. So what's that have to do with this hymn? I tell you, if you don't believe in the wonderfulness of God, then you're a fool. I said there was a fire. The cars were burning. Most of the cargo was burned. But a few remains were retrieved at the accident site. Found in his trunk, Philip's trunk, a survival of his trunk baggage at the crash in fire, a manuscript bearing the lyrics of Bliss's gospel song, which he did not write a tune for. The tune was written by James McGraham, and the lyrics were found titled, My Redeemer. From out of the ashes of a fire came, I will sing of my Redeemer. Out of the fire of hell came out Jesus Christ, the author and finisher and the Redeemer of my salvation. I will sing of my Redeemer became one of the first, if not the first hymn to be recorded on phonograph. And it was recorded by George C. Stephen, Stephen. And some months after this, Stevens told of making a record. That's what it's called a phonograph, but it was you know a record in New York City where Edison's phonograph was exhibited. He sang "My Redeemer" this hymn, making it one of the first songs recorded on Edison's new invention. You know what the first thing was done on the on the on the telegraph Graham's telegraph it was tapped out the, 
you know, the dot, the Morse code. What has what God has brought. And the first music of Edison's machine, the phonograph. The title, My Redeemer, but what we're going to look at, I will sing of my Redeemer. This could have been his last hymn. Maybe another, but this is the one that survived. Such tragedy, and look what such value came. When was the last time this song was sung in your church? I will sing of my Redeemer, capital R, Jesus. My Redeemer. Now I want you to see the pronouns, because this hymn written by Philip P. Bliss, this is a personal testimony of Philip Bliss that was found in the ashes of fire, where this man's soul body burned with his wife in a tragic train wreckage. But his soul didn't burn. His body of his wife and him were cremated. Oh, can't do cremation. Oh, God will gather those, those ashes up one day. And what was left behind the ashes was something that did not turn to ashes. A, a baggage of Mr. Bliss and this manuscript, My Redeemer. And his personal testimony, I will sing of my Redeemer. We don't know if he sang. There was no tune. I would assume with no tune, it was just words. And his wondrous love to me. Me. Bliss. You mean the man that burned in a fire to save his wife? God, you ought not have a man die like that. You know how many Christians died upon faggots? And I'm talking about faggots where stakes put in the ground where Christians were tied to and they were burned to death death over the word of God this man wrote a gospel hymn to Jesus it survived and he died with his wife saved and the remaining story of his life I will sing of my redeemer and his wondrous love to me on the cruel cross I would think a train wreck burning, going back in. I thought I would think that was cruel, but on the cruel cross, he suffered from the curse to set me free. This hymn and the testimony of the death of this man. This is the one that survived the flames of a of a train wreck, of the writer who died with his wife in fire. I would hope that both of them, I would hope that they both were knocked out. I'm not being cruel. They were knocked out so they would not feel the torture of being burned alive, but we don't know. But Jesus Christ upon that cruel cross. And I've always wondered, personal, you don't have to take this. You can throw it. I always wonder if that cross, the wood they use, there's some woods that have splinters. And you ever get a splinter in your finger? I was wondering if maybe one of the things that would also add to the suffering of Christ if that cross gave him splinters. I don't know. Be enough, enough to suffer with a cat of nine tails, thorns upon his brow, being punched by military men of the Roman Legion. And Christ did it to set me free and me, Philip Bliss. God did not set Mr. Bliss and Mrs. Bliss free from that train wreck. And the moment that they both, when their last breath was breathed by the flames of the fire, and they gave up the ghost, they were absent from the body of that train wreck and in glory of smelling no smoke, no smoke coming upon their soul like Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. 
And there was Jesus Christ. I don't know if glory, uh, I'm speculating. I don't know if glory, when they got there, they're there. I don't know if they hugged each other and then saw Jesus. I don't know. From the flames of a fire to paradise, to glory. I will sing the wondrous, and that, that's a theme, wondrous story. Excuse me, I will tell. I will tell the wondrous story. According to Philip Bliss in his last testimony, we think it is. There may be others, I don't know. The one that survived. It says that Mr. Bliss was a soul. He says, I will tell the wondrous story. He sang it, wrote about it, and he spoke about it. He went in the world to preach the gospel. What about your problem, Christian? Why can't you do it? You know how the devil stopped this man? Put him in a train wreck. And the devil got him out and kept his wife in there. And he went back in there for the love of his wife and died with her. But that didn't stop the work. God prevented the, the flames from burning this manuscript. How my loss is state to save. Before April 21st, 1987, I was lost. If I would have died, I'd gone into the flames of hell forever. I would not come out. I would not have re no relief. I would be tormented forever. The wondrous story is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is what told to go in the world and preach to God. They didn't say go in the world and invite people to your wonderful, great, marvelous church. They didn't tell go out there and say, hey, you know, we have a movie night. Hey, we have a fellowship dinner. Hey, we have a potluck dinner. No, we have the gospel. Why is it more people show up at a potluck dinner at a church than the gospel being preached? And you, the churches, allow it to happen. God would give me a church, more people show up for the potluck, I shut the potluck down, say everyone go home. And preach to them in the parking lot while they're getting their cars driving out. You know I would, because I do it at the farmer's market. I preach to them coming in, I preach to them coming out, and I preach to them while they're shopping. In his boundless love, what more love is there than God himself? I don't care what the Jehovah Witnesses say. They can go take a flying leap into the lake of fire, except believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. He is God, and he came off that throne and came down to be born in a manger. And he grew up with people hating him and despising him and wanting to kill him, and he still went on Passover, 6 p.m., and suffered and died for me. For God so loved the world. We love him because he first loved us. Listen, you don't know all my sins. I know all my sins. It's under the blood. You would never give a care to know what anything about me if you knew what sins I have done. What sins I have thought about. And yet God says, I'll die for you. I know the times when you're saved. And, and you're supposed to love me, you're going to reject me, you're going to deny me, you're going to give me up, you're going to have other things, you're going to do other things, you're going to do other things, you're going to say, I still love you, I'll still die for you. That's boundless love. I learned in the hospital with my wife talking to a nurse one time, she told me, she said, it's just so remarkable how many divorces are in a hospital. I said, what do you mean? When a spouse gets sick, ends up in the hospital bed, and, and the consequences are not good, the other partner goes out and divorces them while they're in the hospital bed. That's a shame. You know, you know what God said? I'll take that filthy, miserable maggot of a human being that I created that is just vile and just wicked. And I'll put my son on the cross. I'll give that son of mine. I'll give him the cup of every single sin that Jesus Christ said, Father, let this cup pass from me. The sins of all, wicked, all wickedness, sin of all mankind. And he says, I'll put that sin upon my, my son who knew no sin, that you might have righteousness. That is the love of God. Yeah, we're going to have a movie night. 
We're going to have praise. One church on the way we come home and church, we, we, we go to our church. We're going to have pizza. Yeah, fatten them up for the fire of hell so they sizzle a little more. I've been involved, I've been involved in, in the ministry of feeding the homeless. They want the food even if you do preach before the, the meal. I've been there. I've, I've witnessed that. The boundless love and mercy. I am not going to a burning devil's hell because God, Jesus, loves me. I'm not going. I don't deserve it. I hate pain. I despise it. I got an ear infection. I am miserable. It is humid today in Florida. I am miserable. I would be the ultimate miserableness in hell forever. The Bible says torment and God's love and mercy says, believe on me. Okay, Lord Jesus. All right, your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. All right, I'm not going to hell. I'll give you a place of glory. I'll give you New Jerusalem. I'll give you a beautiful city. I'll give you a, a river. I'll give you to be before my throne for all eternity. I'll give you a brand new body. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more tears. I'll wipe away your tears. I'll make you so no more sin. No more war. No more trouble. I'm not worthy, Lord. That's okay. I know you're not. Now, I want you to take that gospel that saved you and go out there and tell others. I ought to. Jesus said to the fact that one of the things, you know, a servant goes out in the field, he comes in, and, you know, should he just rest and relaxation and all that? No, the, the, the master says, give me a meal. Should the master thank him? No, it is your duty. It is my duty. It is your duty, Christian, to take that love and mercy and tell others. His ransom freely gave. There's nothing. Jesus said, what shall a man give for his soul? Nothing. You can't give nothing. Acts 20, 28 says, it is the price of God's blood. <coughs> I can't pay God's blood. My blood is my blood is too sweet. I'm a diabetic. My blood is too sweet. And listen, if my blood is too sweet for the American Red Cross, I used to give blood all the time. I forget it's been a long, long time, but up to the month that I could get, let's say three months, I forget what. The third month, I'd be there and say, okay, here's my blood. Lay down on the table, you know, have them take my blood and you know, get the donuts and the orange juice afterwards. And one time they came to see Mr. Avery and said, you got diabetes, I do. And we can't take your blood. If the American Red Cross can't take my blood, you think God's going to take my blood as an offering for sin? When in my blood is sin, is vileness, is wickedness, the blood of Adam? I don't have the precious sinless blood of Jesus Christ without spot, Peter says. I ain't going to offer God gold. Gold belongs to God. He made the earth. When he made the earth, he made the gold in it. He made the silver in it. He made all the precious ores in it. I can't give God what he owns already. I will praise my dear Redeemer. I will sing. I will tell. I will praise. What do you praise? Yay, team! They scored a touchdown. Yay! He got a Tony. Yay! Got a blue ribbon. Who cares? Cocky do do on that garbage. Paul says they, they get an un, uh, they get a corruptible crown. They get a corruptible reward. My redeemer, when we get the glory, we're not going to sing about Philip Bliss. We're not going to sing about Billy Sunday. We're not going to sing about uh, Mordecai Ham. We're not going to sing about. Your favorite preacher. We're not going to sing about your pastor. We ain't going to sing about you. We're going to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of Christians think, "Oh, we're going to get to. We're going to sit out on the porch with our coon dog, and we're just going to have a fiddle all the time." You know, you know, hey ho, old Southern, you're going to carry my gear full of doo doo. Oh, it made me sing. We're going to a holy, righteous place to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. No dogs are allowed. They're unclean animals. Any animals in the law that has paws is unclean. That includes kitty cats. 
If you don't like me saying no dogs are in heaven, tough. You mean one little thing, one little animal in the whole world, and you're not going to go tell the world because you're upset that he said the dog's not going to heaven. Get out there and tell a lost man's soul about Jesus Christ. There's more money spent on pet food and pet stuff than a man's soul. Filthy and vile. There's more things given to the animals of Australia, this big fire, than a homeless vet on the streets of America today. His triumphant power, I'll tell. What is his power? He has the ability to wipe away. He is the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Nothing, nothing takes away sin. And don't you dare go in a, in a, in a closet with, with a man who's a sinner herself and tell him what you've done. He don't tell you what he does. Those priests haven't come out and said what they did to little boys. The little boys, they got to grow up and speak up. You go to God and say, God, the Bible says, if I confess my sin, you're faithful. Enough. You're faithful. Oh, boy, I always blow that. He is faithful. Okay, that's it. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is God. That is no one else. That's the power. Hey God, you know what? I I did this. I had it today. I, I sinned today, and I ought not to do it. And I do it, and I tell God, you know, I know I do it, and I know I'm doing it. Lord God, forgive me. And with the right heart, forgiven, forgotten, I know I'll help you. That's the power. When the devil goes up to God and says, hey, God, do you see him do that? The accuser of the brethren, Revelation chapter 1. Do you see him do that? Jesus? Yes, Father? Well, the devil says that Stiley did that. Father? Yes, son? It's under the blood. God turns down and says, what sins are you talking about? It's under the, I don't know. I forgive and forgot. Is there anything God can't do? Yeah, he can't remember my sins under the blood. How's that? Never mind the rock. Is there a rock that God can't, he's so big that he can't, no, he, there's a sin that's under the blood he can't remember. How's that? That's the power of God. The power of God that he's raised dead people alive. The power of God that he's healed people. I can't tell you all the power of God being married twice with my wife and in my children and me. I'll tell you what power of God is. One day that trump is going to blow and only Christians are going up to the clouds to meet for one general assembly of the church of the, of the Jesus Christ and to go to see Jesus in the air. That's power. How the victory he giveth over sin. Cleansing, forgetfulness of sin under the blood. I don't remember. I am a child of God. John says in 1 John, I, it's not me that sins. It's this wicked flesh. And the only way we get rid of it right now to the rapture is you just put it in a, in a hole. But, you know, if you're a child of God, you don't sin. His flesh does. Well done. God, I didn't do so well. Over death and hell. Out of flames of a train wreck, this man went to glory. Out of flames of hell, Jesus Christ came out and redeemed our soul. And if you're not saved, you have not put your faith in Jesus Christ. There's no victory. You die and you go to hell. And you stay in hell. Until the great white throne judgment, if your name is not in that land's book of life, you get to go into the lake of fire that burneth forever where the smoke of their torment is rising forever. The smoke of their torment, I say. This is a man that died in a fire that this him was left behind God knew what would happen to that man. He said, I want you to write about hell and fire and death. 
because you're not going to see this hymn get published. You and your wife are going to come and meet me. Precious is the sight of the Lord, the death of his saint, but your hymn is going to stay behind. I wonder if your if your hymn, such good people that we've written about, <clears throat> the Wesleys, Philip Bliss. I wonder when they're in glory. I wonder when their hymns are sung. If they know, that's the one. That, I don't know. I'm speculating, honey. Here, that's the one that was left in that train wreck we died in. I don't know. I can't imagine what they do with the filth of the music being played in the churches today called contemporary Christian music. That bill. We know that the angels rejoice over one sinner that gets saved. He says, I will sing of my Redeemer. What do you sing? What melody? What tune? What tone? What is the music that you have for God? Not in church. When you're in your car going down the road all by yourself, well, what, what do you hear? When you're happy and you know it, what do you sing? Because what your heart is happy, what your heart will sing about will be your God. And his heavenly love to me. What's a heavenly love? There's that love again. I am going to glory by the love of God. He, from death to life, there's the gospel, has brought me. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. But for Philip Bliss, for Stolly Haver, from death to life. My wife just died in a hospital. Hospice. She was absent from the body and present with the Lord. She didn't die. Her body died. She didn't die. She is now present with the Lord Jesus Christ. With all those that, who have died and go off the glory. You don't die. Your body dies, but you don't die. Your soul moves off to heaven by Jesus, to hell by anything else. That's victory. You're, you're laying in a train wreck. You're laying in a car wreck. A, a building club. Well, you're laying there and you're, you're saved and you die. Next thing you know, you're looking at Jesus. Glory to God. They're giving you the paddles in the hospital. All right. Back off. Dun! And you die. And the, uh, you're in with high, Jesus. Oh, glory. And you would only have one word for the doctors behind. Stop it. No, no, I, don't want to, I don't want to go back. I want to stay right where I am. I think that's what happened to Paul. I think Paul said a man caught the, the head. I think, I think he went to heaven. Son of God. Not the daughter of God. Son of God. With him to be forever. When you die, saved, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you go to be with Jesus Christ forever. You can't lose it. It's not yours to lose. Sing, old sing. This ought to make you sing. Of my redeemer. Now look, there is again the my, the pronoun. This is a personal testimony of Mr. Bliss. With this blood, you better have blood. It better not be water. It better not be attendance. It better not be, you know, the mass. It better not be a certificate. It better be the blood. I go so far, I personally, when I speak about the blood of Jesus, I always put a capital B. I want you to know when I'm talking about blood, I'm talking about the blood. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's not. I, I capitalize the blood. It's God's blood, Acts 20, 28. Who purchased me? That's scripture. I have been bought with a price. I am not my own. God paid for my soul with his blood. I am his. I am no longer mine. I am no longer the devil. I have become a child of God. On the cross. On Calvary. Life begins at Calvary. 
It don't begin at 6. It don't begin at the celebrating birthday. Oh, bull. Life begins at Calvary. Who sealed. He put me in an envelope, licked the envelope, sealed the envelope, said no one's opening it. It's mine. Keep it closed. My pardon. What's a pardon? A pardon can only be given to a guilty party. I am guilty of sin. I am a sinner. I have sinned. I sin. If a warden with a governor of any of the 50 states go into any prison and they have a, a handful of documents of pardon and all they have to do is write the name. They go in there, go to the first cell. Are you guilty of the crime? You're, no, I didn't do it. I, I, I was afraid. Uh, mistrial, you know, cops are against me. Can't get you nothing. Next one. Sir, your, your crime is this. Did you do it? No, it, it was my buddy. It, it was all his fault. And he framed me. And no, can't give you a pardon. Next one. Hey, listen, you know, the crime that you are in here, is it your crime? No, oh, man. I was he. I was in another area. I, I, I don't know who did it. Can't give you a pardon. Go up to the next prison. Styling? Yes. Are you guilty of these sins? Oh, yes. And probably more so. There are sins I've committed I probably didn't know I committed. So you're telling me you're guilty. I'm guilty. You're going to hell. Is that what happens with sin? The wages of sin is death. I'm going to die. You're going to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. You don't? No, I don't. And you're guilty. I'm guilty. So you believe that you're a sinner. Yep, I lied. I stole. I mistreated my parents. I bared false witness. That's interesting. And the Bible says that you know you're going to die because you're a sinner. you get you get you may get run over by a tractor trailer. That's going to kill you. Yeah, it's going to kill me. But you realize the main cause of your death is because you're a sinner. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Okay, I'm going to die because I'm a sinner. And when you die as a sinner, you're going to hell. I don't want to go to hell, but you say, I'm going to go to hell. He that has not the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God. Yeah, I don't have the Son. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's a gift? Yeah. I can receive a gift, right? Yeah, you can receive it. I want that gift. Are you guilty? I'm guilty. Here's the gift. Well, praise the Lord. April 21st, 1987, I received the free gift of God, Jesus Christ, eternal life. I am no longer going to hell. Pardon is only for the guilty, and I'm guilty. I meet a lot of people in the public ministry. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But you ain't going to get no pardon. You need to be ungood to get a pardon. Pay the debt. What's the debt? Death. Death. How did God pay that death? He died on the cross. There are people out there that say he didn't die. You know what the resurrection is? When they laid his, his body in that cold stone. <laughs> I'm a liar. Forget it. You're a liar. You're a deceiver. You're a false teacher. A false prophet. Shut up. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to that is the That is the debt that Jesus paid. For my pay, uh, for my sins, Jesus paid my debt. I can't pay for. It. I don't. I don't have the price. I don't have God's blood in me. I have God's blood through Jesus Christ. Apply the blood, Lord God, to my sins by Jesus Christ. All right, it's paid. Acts one twenty eight. Made me free. What's that mean? No more shackles. My chains came off. I'm free to do whatever I want. I don't have to serve the Lord. So you don't have to serve the Lord being saved. No, you can do it. You're free. Do whatever you want. You're going to lose rewards. You're going to lose inheritance. You won't have any crowns. But you go to heaven. You have a free will after salvation. I advise you to do what the Bible tells you. I advise you to, to walk as a true Christian. I advise you to be, a, you know, you can be a Christian. The Bible says there's a difference between a Christian and a disciple. A disciple is one that disciplines himself. A disciple is, is a step above a Christian. 
You got to be pardoned. This is a man that died. Probably a violent death. I, I don't know. Maybe he was knocked out. I hope he was, but can't do nothing about it now. But I know when I take my last breath outside the rapture, probably then you take your last breath, I know I'll be with the Lord. I know those who have witnessed, if they truly receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, as I, the Lord has given me opportunity to be with them and, and help them and show them how to be, if they, they got saved, they don't take a last breath. They go to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's Redeemer. I was, I was sold into sin. I was under the bondage of the devil, my father. He kept me in prison. He kept me in fear of death. Listen, I always thought when you died, you still had conscience. And you really do. But I thought when they put you in that coffin, you're still alive. But dead. You still had conscience. You knew you were going to be put into this box. You knew it would be, you know, pitch dark. And it that ain't true. I had no fear of death. Now, I have a fear of way of dying. I wouldn't want to be burning in a train wreck or any fire. I wouldn't want to be tortured. I would love to just put my head down the pillow, close my eyes, and see Jesus. I don't know what's going to happen with my death. I may get raptured. But I have been bought from the, from the devil by Jesus. Jesus said, upon the cross, Father, I will suffer and die. And they're going to bury my body. And that blood that spilt from, from the time that they whipped me, from the time they put the thorns on me, to they nail my hands, and, they, and that, that spear that pierces my side, that blood is going to pay for the price of lost people's souls. The Father said, I'll take it. I said, Father, I want that blood to wash me. I want that blood to cleanse me. I have been redeemed by Jesus and Jesus alone. We had a thing back in Connecticut where I lived. You go buy soda in a can of, or a bottle, plastic or glass, and soda can was you pay five cents extra. So it's, I don't know, 75 cents for a can of soda. I would have to pay 80 cents in plus taxes. But if I brought the can back to the store, I said, here's my empty can. They would give me the five cents back. That's redeemed. I am created by God. Not going away to the devil. Thanks to Adam. And God said to, said to the son, and the son had a conversation at one point in the eternal, eternity present. I mean, before there are creation but they have been sold to the devil so so we need to do something to get them back and the son said I will shed our blood father our blood will be the ransom price so when Christ shed his blood and I said, I will put my trust or anybody will put their trust in that blood. And when I believe on the blood of the Lord Jesus, the, the, the Father and the Son walk up to the devil and said, that, that's mine. That soul belongs to me now. I paid it. I'll take it back now. The store will take that can back and give me my five cents. God will take back this soul that has sinned and violated everything he has said. I have done everything he told me not to do. And I have not done everything he's told me to do. Except believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in that blood. God said to the devil, I'll take that soul back. He's mine. Write that name in the Lamb's Book of Life. 
Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved.